So I'm Andrew Bear. I've been coming to Sanibel Sea School for about six and a half years, and we are here in Sanibel Island, Florida. So Sanibel Sea School is a nonprofit organization that works to help kids and young adults, all the way up to adults, learn about the ocean and love the ocean. So days here are pretty crazy. We start out early. Um, staff gets here around eight, and then around nine o'clock we start getting with kids and we start playing card games, which is great. Everybody starts to meet each other. We have circle time in the morning where everybody gets to know each other's names and we start to learn about the activity of the week, which is great. And then towards the middle of the day, then we do an activity in the morning, normally a beach walk or something like that. And then we finish out um, with lunch at around 12. And then later on in the day, we go surfing, which is a blast. Everybody gets all wet and has bunch of fun and then towards the end of the day we have a normal activity like arts and crafts or something or we might go back to the beach for more wet fun. So basically our classes are slightly different than our normal sea school week. Um, we go out onto the causeway or different destinations and we end up learning about a specific organism or animal like for example estuaries or shrimp or seagrass for a short period of time and we really try to get the kids into the water and really get to learn about the organism, organism and get really hands-on with them. My favorite, my favorite class would probably have to be uh, Calusa Week. Calusa Week's great. Everybody get, gets just absolutely wild, gets into the whole mindset of being a Calusa Indian and really just goes from being a kid to a Calusa Hatchie Indian 500 plus years ago. So basically, um, the Clusahatchee were Indians that used to live here a long time ago before any Europeans or anybody came over and they basically lived on the island so the whole focus of the entire week is to really get across to the kids of, of how they survived throughout the week and we make totems to different gods. Um, we also do different things like making uh, teepee huts and different fortifications that Clusahatchee might have made and just really get the kids down and dirty. We go on the Bailey track and they get all muddy and stuff. It's, it's wonderful. So when we take a kid out, it's not a basic learning about what a seahorse is. It's kind of taking it out of context of just the organism and putting it into the whole span of the ocean. So for example, if, if we're learning about a seahorse, we want to talk about where a seahorse lives which is the seagrass beds and why they're important to Florida. And we really try to incorporate ocean conservation into the whole thing. And by saying, if we keep our seagrass beds wonderful and we keep the water around there nice and clean and clear, then we get to keep our wonderful seahorses and everything's all wonderful. So the estuary class, we try to focus on the different water climates of of warm versus cold environments and also about how estuaries really harbor um, a wide variety of juvenile species as well as higher prey items but try to focus on the juvenile species on how uh, fish start as eggs and then they grow up in these estuaries and then move on to adulthood into different locations. So I, I would definitely say it's a school rather than a camp in the aspect that every single day we build off of the knowledge that we learned the prior day. For example, um, like we, we learn about green sea turtles and we learn about how, um, for example, they have their rib bones are the only bones that, um, so I would say that Sanibel Sea School is more of a school over a camp just primarily because uh, every single one of our classes builds on top of the knowledge that we learned prior. For example, uh, sea turtles, we teach them about how, like for example, there's seven different sea turtles in the world and then from those seven we try to go really into depth the next day on talking about like green sea turtles, like how they're called green sea turtles because when, um, when ship uh, captains and, and other people that used to bring in sea turtles and harvest them used to open them up, their fat is green. And so we just really try to build on top of the knowledge that we learned the prior day and continue throughout. Ocean love is being able to travel all over the world and being able to find yourself in the ocean and just be genuinely happy. I would say it's from personal experience it's absolutely 
critically important because from a younger age when I first came to this camp, I came to this camp around 12, 13, never was a camper, but I was still young and I really didn't know a lot about the ocean and, and I kind of just played in it and took it for granted. But then when you really join the Sanibel Sea School and become a part of it and teach the young kids at a younger age, you learn so much more about the sea that you would not perceive just by looking at it. And when you actually interact with the sea, you take it for what it is and not for granted. Well, it's great because it's my major. Um, I'm studying marine biology currently at USC. And it's, it's wonderful because every single time I go into a class, uh, I, I just know a lot more answers than everybody around me because I'm going from personal experience. And I'm getting A's in my classes just because I know a lot more information than the average person that has never gone to a camp where we're teaching kids things that even adults don't know. Um, so over the past seven years, I've really been engaged in learning, even from when I started, even till now, um, about the ocean. And it's been helping me tremendously throughout my college experience. So I go to University of South Carolina and I'm majoring in marine biology. I wanted to major in marine biology because ever, ever since I was a little kid, um, I've always been fascinated by fish. Fish are one of my favorite creatures in the entire world. Um, I, I grew up with a saltwater fish tank. I loved those fish tremendously and then I started with corals and then I joined the sea school and that just totally reaffirmed and just made my love for the ocean just expand because of the smiles I see on the faces of all the kids. At the end of the week, it, it brings tears to my eyes because every single time they just come up to me and give me a big hug and I don't want to leave, I don't want to leave, and it's just wonderful, it touches you. My favorite thing about being a CIT is when, when I used to be a CIT, I absolutely thought at the beginning that I was completely powerless and that I, I didn't really help out the C-School all that much. But over the course of the first year that I was a CIT, it completely changed my view because CITs are a connection more than a counselor between the kids and yourself. CITs are always one-on-one -on -one with the kids, always working with them, and always providing the kids with more fun than the counselors ever could. <laughs> Uh, the kind of education that you get at the Sanibel Sea School is extraordinary. Uh, the type of information that you come home with is completely different than anything that you would ever imagine. Um, I mean, we're teaching kids that are from eight and six, and even during our Shrimpy Guppy Week, four years old, we're teaching kids stuff that you and I wouldn't have known without the help of Bruce and everybody else that is part of this organization. We just teach them information that is just meant to blow people's minds because if we can blow a kid's mind about the ocean, it's gonna get them so much more engaged and they're just gonna love the ocean way more. Going along with our goal with Sanibel Sea School, if we get a kid to love the ocean, if we can get a kid to really value the ocean, then we can embody conservation in them at a younger age. And as they grow up, they're gonna to continue to do that because it's so hard to change somebody and to make them love something at an older age. Whereas at a younger age, you just are so easily able to fall in love with something if you're taught it the right way. If I were to be a sea creature, I would be a man of shrimp. These things are awesome. They have some of the best eyesight that anything on the planet has ever had. Instead of um, having three cones in our eyes, which allows us to see the colors that we see today, they have 12. So we are trying to imagine what they can see, but we still don't know because they're seeing X-rays and gamma rays and all these different other light rays that we can never ever perceive because we can't physically can't. But at the same time, they also have the fastest punch. They have two modified claws, which are clubs that come out at the speed of a bullet and can crack like a half inch glass if there's a crab inside a jar and just absolutely smash it. And there are these huge octopus, giant octopuses, which are about yay big, that try to attack them and they just can't because these little small mana shrimps just pop them and they just 
get out of there as fast as they can. I would say that I learned all this information about the mana shrimp continuously. These things just absolutely blow my mind. I've learned information about them in Sea School. I've learned information from the Discovery Channel and from firsthand. I even had one of my knuckles split open by one of these things. Did it hurt? <laughs> yeah, it hurt like crazy. The ocean's wonderful. I, I don't know exactly how to describe the ocean in one word because it's so diverse and so big and I'm so glad that we have more ocean than we have land. But to me, the ocean is just pure joy and happiness. Every single time I'm around the ocean, I forget all my troubles. All my troubles just go out the window and I'm just, I feel a part of the ocean the second that I get there. Okay, so Nico, um, Nico's really interesting. He came to us about last summer and uh, basically this kid went into the water with a life jacket on. Super scared to get his head wet, didn't want to get into the water and, and just didn't even want to surf. Throughout the week, he was on my surf team. I kept going, Nico, come on, try it, try it. And eventually he kept trying it and he started to love it. And then he eventually took his life jacket off. And this winter camp, he's been dunking people. He's been playing around in the water, just loving it. When somebody overcomes their fear of the ocean, they go from pushing away from the ocean to more of embodying and becoming completely open-minded. Like for example, uh, when a kid doesn't want to go in the water because they're scared of the ocean, they're, they just kind of stick to themselves and don't want to be a part of anything. Whereas when you start to get them in the water and you start to play with them in the water, they want everything to do with the water. They want to be a part of the water. They want to dunk people in the water. They want to have a fantastic time playing in the water. Um, what I've learned in sea school has affected my life by making me much more grown up. I have gone from interacting with kids and becoming, well actually let me start over, sorry. I've gone from being this kid that looked at Sanibel Sea School and, and has, has made me work so much harder in life. Uh, I, for example, I used to never take out the trash, I used to never do my homework, I used to not do all that stuff. But at the same time, when I joined Sea School, I see everybody around me working so incredibly hard, all of the staff, and I just want to be a part of that. I want to help people. And when you see people in real life and you kind of think about St. Val Sea School, you want to help them so much more and you want to really put forth the effort to help them. My favorite thing at St. Val Sea School is beach mayhem. Uh, the reason why I call it beach mayhem is because there's no planned activity. There's nothing really going on, but it's just everybody's trying to dunk and get everybody wet. Everybody's trying to really get everybody into the ocean where the water's freezing or it's boiling hot. And it's kind of everybody's just running around loving everybody and attacking everybody. And, and it's kind of those moments where you don't really have a, a planned activity that everybody just really engages with each other and really starts to open each other's minds up to the ocean. Okay, so the first time that I ever jumped in the water, we went out to the Gulf Stream um, with a bunch of little kids. These kids were from the age of eight till 13. And we had gone out into the water and we were just on, on this 20 foot boat and Doc Bruce anchors down, tries to put the anchor down, the anchor's just diving, diving, diving. And we can see the anchor, but we can't see the bottom. And all these kids are just super anxious looking over. And Doc Bruce goes, okay, everybody take their life jackets off. We're just gonna jump in and float. I'm looking around, I'm like, this is crazy. Like, I love the ocean, but I've never been in 500 plus feet of water. And the thing that just absolutely broke my fear of deep, deep water is seeing these six-year-olds just jump willy-nilly into this 500 foot depth water and I'm looking at myself in the mirror and just saying come on like these kids are doing it just and they're loving it come on jump in so I just jumped in and that kind of just reaffirmed everything and made it like you're ridiculous just hop in and have fun okay so I'm in midair and probably instantaneously I'm thinking okay here we go here we go and then I hit the water open my eyes, still sinking down a little bit, 
and just, whoa, there's just blue, blue, blue everywhere. I can't see anything. This is just crazy. There's, there's no depth to the ocean when you're that deep and you're seeing all these kids and it's almost like you're in the middle of this giant space and there's just you guys and you can't see an end to the what's it, what's ahead of you. And so you're just looking around, you can't see the bottom, you can't see anything. You just look up at the sun, it's shining down on you and you just kind of realize, wow, this is crystal clear water and you're just in absolute blue. And there's nothing really to describe it other than the fact that you're alone with everybody around you and nothing in the world can affect you other than the people that are there. And you're just all great vibes and everybody's just having fun. That experience taught me to get out of my shell. That experience taught me to not be afraid to kind of get myself back into my childhood self of exploring everything and to just really be a part of the world and to not be afraid to do things. Oh yeah, this is a cool one. Um, so this is Coral Reef Week where we go to the Bahamas, Luki. Um, and so we're out on this boat ride and we're all snorkeling and we, we come back from the boat or come back to the boat and we just start to see these two large shapes underneath the boat. and we're like, what the heck is this? And so we get closer, get closer, and there are these two huge Goliath grouper. Now, Goliath grouper are the size of refrigerators. They can get up to 800 pounds, and this guy was probably 600 pounds and had a mate with him that was probably 400. And so these fish are just hovering right underneath our boat, and all of these kids are just coming face to face that close with this huge animal with the mouth that big and a rows and rows of teeth and just looking at this thing and I look to my right and there's this kid David Cahill no big than that this big and he's just staring straight into the mouth of the beast and just loving every second of it and sure enough never attacked him or anything just watched each other kind of took a curiosity in each other and then we parted ways so you guys were jumped out of the boat you were out of the boat we, we were already in the water and we had just come back from a long snorkeling trip and so we saw these two giant fish and just interacted and had a moment with them. Last thing I would say is Sea School transforms people. Um, we had, we've had so many different kids. And we've had one kid, for example, Ryan, who started out as a kid that always tried to make trouble and, and really didn't want to engage too much in the group. And just over the course of a year and even now, he's been here for well over five years. This kid is loving people. He's really engaging in everything. And Sanibel Sea School really not only teaches you to love the ocean, but to love one another. So the games at Sanibel Sea School are geared towards making kids have fun because you learn the most when you have fun. When you're truly, really interested in something, then you're really engaged in having a lot of fun and enjoyable, uh, just enjoyable time with what you're learning. So for example, we have during a hammerhead week, we have an activity where we have goggles that completely blind kids other than uh, two cylinders out from the sides and kids have to play Marco Polo with these goggles on and they can only see by turning their head in both left and right directions. and for example, with that, they learn that hammerheads have peripheral vision and they don't have straight ahead vision. And this really just engages them and gets them active and having a ton of fun while at the same time learning about the organism or whatever we're teaching them that week. So when you're learning things and you're in having fun, you learn things so much more. Memories stick a lot more when you're having a great time with the things that you're doing. Uh, Kids and adults will tell you on and on about what they love most because it's, they're having fun with it and they know the most about it because they want to keep having fun with it and keep learning about it. And that's what the Sanibel Sea School teaches you because we're really geared towards having a great time and learning at the same time and when you combine those two you make wonderful memories and you learn a ton about everything.